Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Harrison Consoles, and in this video, we're going to look at the gate element in the channel strip of Mixbus 32C version 9. So I have a song called up here that has a little bit of snare bleed in the kick drum mic, and I'm going to use the gate to get some of that snare out and just get a cleaner kick sound. So here's the sound of the drums all together. Okay, so looking at the gate element here, you can see that the metering goes from top to bottom. And when the gate is on and the meters are fully red, that means that the gate is closed. So as the gate opens up, you're gonna see the LEDs start moving back toward the top. But as the gate closes, the LEDs will move back down toward the bottom. So looking at the rest of the tracks, we can see that the gate is not on and we can see the indication by the actual gate LED which the LED is not the button itself. When you move your mouse over the gate name, the whole area becomes a button. So you can really click anywhere in this range to turn it on and off. And this is helpful when the elements are smaller on the screen and you have less room to click. So just know that you don't have to click right on the LED, but you can click anywhere within that range. So if the gate's off, you can see the red LEDs go away. And with the gate back on, the gate is fully closed until our input signal passes the threshold. So I'm gonna concentrate on this kick drum here. Let's start messing around with the different parameters. So the first thing I'm gonna do is mess with the threshold slider. So too high and the signal didn't reach the threshold. So we just wanna bring it down. Now the input meter and the sidechain filter work together. So this input meter indicates the level post sidechain filter that is being fed to the gates detector. So since we're working on a kick drum, the farther left I have the sidechain filter, the lower the frequencies, but the farther right that I go, the higher the frequency and the less of that low end the gate is going to detect. So I'm gonna keep this all the way to the left and we can actually listen to the sidechain filter as well. So let's play it. So the sidechain filter will definitely help zero in on the frequency range you want to gate. Now we do have attack and release times. So the faster the attack, the faster the gate is going to open. And the slower the attack, the slower the gate is going to open. Here's with the fastest setting. And the slowest setting. And on the slow setting there, I can hear that the attack is just not there. So faster attack times are gonna work better for our kick drum. Okay, same goes for our release. The faster the release, the more it's gonna cut off the sound. And the slower the release, the more it's gonna let all that body and tone of the drum carry through but you are gonna keep the other sounds in there as well. The hold knob determines the minimum time that the gate will be held fully open after the gate is triggered. And this is a common case where a gate is used to focus on a single sound, i.e. a kick drum, and this allows the gate to be held open for the entire length of the drum hit rather than decaying the sound immediately after the transient falls below the threshold. So to me, this kind of keeps the body and the timbre of the kick intact while not allowing other information to come through. So now you can hear we have a fully oscillated kick drum apart from the rest of the kit. And now let's hear the whole thing together. All 
All right, guys, that is all for this video. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. And be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you'll be notified of all future videos. And until next time, I'm Nathan from Harrison Consoles. Happy mixing.